The first one, we have the integral of e to the inverse cosine x. The second one, we have the integral of e to the cosine x. And in this case, only one of them has an answer, and the other one is not doable, so we're going to do it. But which one is what? Why don't you pause the video and then give them a try? Okay, now, as we know, the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out which one is the one that has no answer so we don't bother with it, right? And I like to tell my students that sometimes you just have to know it. The more you know, sometimes you can save a lot of time. Okay, this right here has no answer. And technically, we will say this has no elementary function for the answer for this, okay? This is not doable with the functions that we know. And if you know this, you can pick it up right away. And similarly, you also know integral of e to the x squared. That one has no answer. Integral of 1 over l and x, no answers, okay? There are a few famous ones that you should know. So that once you know them, you don't ever spend the time to bother with them. This right here uh, is non elementary. Namely, it has no answer for that. So we don't need to bother with it. And now this gives us the equation how can we do that then? As we see, this also seems pretty impossible, right? It is impossible in the x world. But if we take this into the u world, we may have a better chance. So let's do it. So let me begin by saying u is equal to the inverse cosine x. So let's put that down right here. And hopefully everything will go smoothly from there. I still have to get dx right in terms of u. But then I'm not looking at this equation and take the derivative. Let's take the regular cosine on both sides. Okay, let's take the regular cosine on both sides. So that way we get cosine u, which will be x. And these two other equivalent statements. I can just differentiate this instead of that, and that way we can get dx right away. As we can see, right here the derivative of this is negative sine u du, and then x will give us dx, right? So we're ready to go. So this is going to be the integral e is just the e, and then the inverse cosine x is the u, so we'll put on u right here, and then for dx is that. So we multiply by negative sine u du. Okay? And then as you can see, we have this negative right here, so we can take the outside. So we have the negative integral e to the u sine u du, right? And how can we work this out? This integral requires integration by parts, but the most important thing is that this is actually doable. The matter is just that we have to do the work. I did the work for you guys already. Check out the video down below. I also showed you guys my secret of how to do integration by part. It's called the DI method, if you haven't checked that out already. So let me just put on the answer right here for you guys. Hopefully you guys don't mind, okay? Don't comment on <laughs> this video and say, this person is so lazy, he's not doing all the steps. I did already, okay? I get comments like that for no reason. Anyways, we have this negative right here, and let me write down the answer for this part for you guys. Once again, watch the video, and you will know how to do it as well. So let me open the parentheses. The answer is negative one-half e to the u cosine u, and then plus one-half e to the u times sine u, okay? And then, you see, we did the integral, but then we are not done yet, because we have to change this back to the x. So, at the end, you see, what we have to do first is, let's distribute the negative into the parentheses. So we have this and that. We will have negative negative. That will give us positive one half. And then e is the e. u is the inverse cosine x. So let me put that down. Inverse cosine x, right? And then for cosine u, well, u is once again the inverse cosine x. So we will have cosine of u, which is the inverse cosine x, right? And I'm going to erase this part, and we will have negative times positive. That will give us negative 1 half. E is still the E. U is that. So inverse 
cosine x. And we have the sine of the u. u is still that. So inverse cosine x, like this. And there's one little touch that we are going to do. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. We can write them with square root or regular um, algebraic expressions. So this right here is 1 half e to the uh, e to the inverse cosine x, right? And then cosine and inverse cosine, they cancel each other out. We will just have x. So let me put down just x right here. And we will have the minus, let me put down the 1 half. And let me just leave a space because I want to work this out and put that right here. We will have the e to the inverse cosine x right here. And what's this? What's the sign of inverse cosine x? Let's do that real quick right here. Okay. To work this out, I'm going to utilize these two statements that we put down earlier. So once again, I'm using these two together. Especially for this one, let's focus on cosine of u is equal to x. And then let's put down the x as x over 1. And once we have this, you know we can draw a right triangle. And the angle here is u, and let's put the right angle here. The definition of cosine is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over 1. x will be labeled it right here, and 1 will be over labeled it right there. And with that being done, we can find this side here. That will be 1 minus x squared, and then we take the square root, right? And then we can look at this triangle and we'll figure out what's sine of u, because this is the u part, right? Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. So that's just square root of 1 minus x squared. That's it. At the end, we can definitely put plus c, and this is it. And I know. Sometimes I put parentheses around the inverse sign, sometimes I didn't, but it doesn't matter. If you're watching this video, you should know <laughs> that shouldn't bother you too much, right? That's it.